Welcome back to the uh, second in a series of two lectures, or lectures, uh, brief recordings on the R code for one-way ANOVA loop with the Tukey's post hoc test. Uh, in the previous uh, recording, uh, I did more demonstration. This one I won't do quite so much demonstration. But one of the products that we had achieved with the uh, the last one was uh, this file that had um, the metabolite name in this case. Um, and the summary ANOVA, one-way ANOVA table, and the two keys for all 477, as it turned out, uh, of the metabolites in this particular study. The key thing to focus on, of course, is here, the, the PR value. So uh, one way we could do this is if we activated the find, and you see it over here, and we put in PR greater than F, and then we just kept hitting enter, it would take us to every one of these. And as you're going along, you would be looking at the numbers here. And this is a long, long way to do it. So the what I'm the extra steps I've gone through is to try to come up with a short list. Then we can come back here and search uh, by the name of the metabolites from our short list to uh, double check the p-value get more information, actually just copy and paste these results um, into a composite report of only those that are significant. We can then also check to see which group is different from which group from the uh, Tukey's post hoc. So what I didn't show you last time was the makeup of the table. Uh, so what would your table have to look like? So uh, the only word that might differ is this first one here, treatment group. Uh, in the code, you'll see here that I use that TRT GRP. So you'd either have to change it to run this on your own. If you had your own file set, it'd have to be set up like this, all right? So they don't even have to be sorted out over here because uh, R will, will uh, do that based upon matching the names, of course, aggregating them. Uh, it's just that this column name has to match this throughout the whole uh, series here. So it might be easier just to go in and change this column heading to TRT uh, GRP exactly as it shows here with the uppercase uh, before you would import it. Read it into R. So now let's go through it again. Um, and what I'm going to do is just select all the way through the sink. So it's going to prompt me for that file. I'm going to call in the uh, flux file this time. And then there shouldn't be anything until it's done. Okay, so here's the re reaction flux file. And it's working on it, working on it. Is this any faster in the 64 bit? Still taking quite a bit of time. So it's recording all of those. I don't think it is necessarily any faster. There we go. And it's completed. So now uh, I want to, there we go, into the first sync. So I'm going to run this here. You can hear my timer going off in the background, maybe. Um, sorry about that. I'm just going to pause. Okay, let's uh, continue with our recording here. So now I need to run the second uh, sync. I'm glad I didn't run it yet. But yeah, there it is. <laughs> what is it doing here? Okay, so I already ran that. Sorry, I'm trying to catch up with where I was. So now I need to bring in this uh, file, ANOVA P values. Okay, so you can see that it's been updated. So the other run, all the results were uh, overwritten. So, uh, so now we have a table two, and we're going to reorganize that table two into a DF new, and write that to another file. Okay, 
and we wrote that to p-value table. Now I need to open that in Excel. p-value. This will have our new results. And I need to select this one. Find, replace. Now let me just select all these and the, the square bracket run one is still there. And I'll just come here and get rid of the NA. You have to select just this column to get rid of the NA because if there's an NA in any of these words in here, it'll get rid of those as well. Watch what it does with the NAN uh, where there was no value for it. And A, replace that. And I'm going to um, replace all these ends with a 1. I just happen to know that they're there. Just so that there's a numerical value in there. Okay. Now we save this as the uh, 2. Yes, I'm overwriting all this work from before. Okay, and close it. We don't need to save it here. We just did save it. Okay, so now uh, we can do the final ones here. I need to get all of this and run that. Why is it prompting me to... What do I have to open now? P oh, P P value 2. That's right. <laughs> so notice I didn't get the error message. <laughs> Forgetting what I have to do with my own uh, program here. That's why I'm recording it, so I'll always remember, I guess. Um, so we had that problem with trying to write the table uh, where it would be less than uh, 05. This, uh, this argument here of creating table 4 from table 3 if only the p-value is less than 05. Uh, not sure why it won't work on the, the other one, but it does on this one. But it makes for a nice demonstration. So now uh, we come here to the uh, one-way ANOVA p less than 05. And here we see our short table. Now what we can do here is uh, Put in an X and hit tab. So we've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And now we can select all of this and insert a table. And then we're going to convert the table, the text to a table. And we're going to do the auto fit to the contents here. And it's uh, not quite fitting on the piece of paper we have, but that's fine. We don't need these two really. So I'm going to delete those columns. Uh, maybe if we go to a, how's that looking? I'd probably just shrink this one up a bit and it'd be all right. There we go. Just a long reaction name here. So you see this now is the flux of the reaction. So. Uh, we can see all the ones uh, that out of the 477 reactions, or this one might have been more than that even. Um, let me scroll up. is yep, 466 reactions. Fewer reactions than there were metabolites. Um, so we can kind of go back and forth. Uh, say this uh, CHP1. Uh, we can copy it from here if we want, come over here and uh, clear that out, paste it into our search. Oh, I don't know why it doesn't do this. Oh, that's because this is still the metabolites. <laughs> it's not going to find a reaction in the metabolite table. <laughs> okay, let's open our... Uh, Inova Tukey's text file. See, it's bigger with the 371. Okay. There we are.
So here we see uh, it searches out all these by that name. And uh, we have our probability value, the 05 that we saw. That's what showed up on our table here. Wait, I don't have the exact one. LBR, P1.2. That's 1A. That did quite make it, but it wouldn't matter. Uh, none of these are significant. So here's the one that we had. No, dot two. 1C.2 LBR. There we are. So um, here's the p-value that we saw. And we see all the comparisons in the two keys. And it looks like only one of them is significant. This one here. And note that this is a p-adjusted. So the Bonferroni correction uh, for the p-value has been uh, applied. And so we have a significant difference between moderate and control, and it is uh, in the positive direction. The difference, uh, it's an increased flux in that reaction. Um, and then we would, you know, basically, I know I want to keep working to have it automated so that uh, all the information would be pulled out. It's, it's easy to uh, pull out separate information on one item within a complex uh, set of results like this. Um, it would be very nice just to pull out only those that have this. You still need your full uh, summary table to have this information, your degrees of freedom, uh, and your F value, and of course your P value. And that would be also nice just to filter out only those that are significant here, but that's a little more complex uh, programming than uh, the state I'm at right now. This at least gets a lot of work done uh, and makes it easier to look through uh, a long list of reactions and uh, metabolites as uh, candidate biomarkers. Um, because we are using the uh, very stringent uh, Bonferroni's uh, adjustment for the p-value, uh, this isn't uh, simply a, uh, a wild goose uh, chase to see whatever might show up. You know, we are controlling for uh, false positive uh, uh, possibilities on this. So it is one approach to uh, making a short list of candidate uh, biomarkers uh, in a, a complex study like this of looking at the four stages of Alzheimer's disease um, and a very complex metabolic pathway where we can track both metabolites and the, um, the uh, flux through the reactions in those pathways. So I hope that's helped you to understand how to uh, use a, a loop for a complex uh, analysis like this and to capture that information into documents. Uh, such that uh, you can generate a report if it was your job or find biomarkers if that was what your company was uh, uh, trying to do. I'm not hitting my done button. <laughs> okay, I'll use Alt-P.